With that, I'd like to welcome you all to downloading your donated Microsoft software. Today we are being joined by Jim Orr of Microsoft and Gregory Seely of TechSoup. Just to introduce myself, my name is Becky Wiegand, and I am a, an interactive events producer here at TechSoup. I'll, I'll be your facilitator for the day. And feel free to ask any questions in that chat window throughout the webinar because we also have Sarah Hiller from Microsoft and Ali Bezdikian from TechSoup on the back end to capture all of those questions that you have throughout the duration of the webinar. And we will raise those up during Q&A and also maybe throughout the webinar depending on what comes in. In addition to myself and Sarah and Allie, we have our presenters for the day, Jim Orr who is a Senior Product Manager of Worldwide Licensing and Pricing at Microsoft. And we have Gregory Seely who is a Supervisor here at TechSoup in our Client Services Department. Here's our agenda for the day. We will be looking at a little bit about TechSoup in case you're not familiar with who we are. We'll talk about the Microsoft Donation Program through TechSoup. We will tour the Volume Licensing Service Center. And we will talk about things like software assurance benefits that come with your donated TechSoup software or Microsoft software through TechSoup. And then we'll have time for Q&A. So to jump into who is TechSoup, we are part of TechSoup Global. We are working toward the day when every nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization has the technology, resources, and knowledge they need to operate at their full potential. And what that means to us is that we want to make sure that you other nonprofit organizations, which we are as well, have the access to software, hardware, donated materials, donated online services, as well as educational resources like this webinar and our articles, blog posts, newsletters to help you make the best decisions about your technology. We are a 501c3 nonprofit as well. And you can read on the screen a little bit about the impact that our work has made in partnering with companies like Microsoft and Adobe, Symantec, and many others around the country and around the world. If you haven't been to our website in a long time, we launched a new site earlier this year. And you'll get to see some view of that today during this webinar. And hopefully it will help you walk through things a little bit easier so that you can not only request donated software, but fulfill those donation requests and install them and use them to your most effective abilities. So before I hand it off to Gregory, have you requested donated software through TechSoup before? And in particular, have you requested donated Microsoft software? Take a moment just to answer that question for us because that will help us understand what experience you already have as our audience today in using our site. Many people may have done it but maybe two or three years ago when we had a different website. So we hope that this will be informative and will help answer questions. Give just another moment for people to click the screen. And I'll go ahead and show results. So about 67% have requested Microsoft donations or have requested software through TechSoup, not necessarily Microsoft, but that's great to know. So hopefully this will be familiar, but we also hope that you'll learn something new today as well. So to get us started, I'd like to introduce Gregory Seely, who is a supervisor here at TechSoup in our Client Services Department who walks people through this process on the phone day in and day out and can help answer your questions. I forgot to mention earlier, we also have Tim who is from our Client Services Department on the back end who may also be answering questions for you, particularly if you have questions about your account or how to log in or your, your organization status with TechSoup. So thank you so much for joining us, Gregory. Thank you, Becky. So yes, the um, TechSoup uh, my, the Microsoft program through TechSoup is, ex is extremely large. Microsoft has been very generous to us. It's going to be the vanguard of helping out nonprofits. We're very proud to have uh, to work with them. And the, both the, the Microsoft program, which has expanded greatly since it began, and um, we, we as TechSoup have tried to keep up with that and to make it easier to navigate and to find information about Microsoft, both products that they offer and any kind of support and the structure of their program. Um, so first of all, again, it does, it, they are our most generous um, partner. The, pop, the, the program is more complicated because it is so big and so generous. Um, most of our partners work on a fiscal year. Uh, this is not the case with Microsoft. It is, you, 
is a unique partner in that sense. Um, organizations in this case can request up to 50 licenses from any of 10 of the 53 title groups and up to five server licenses in two years, which means you can get up to 50 licenses of, say, Office or of an operating system. Um, and again, I'll show you where to find that information in a little bit when we get to the uh, site here. As far as the cycle is concerned, this is a, it, Microsoft reset everything July 27th of 2011. So if you have a, a request history with TechSoup, that date becomes the new start. The, the first request you place after that date becomes the start of your cycle. And if you've already placed one since that date, that date is going to, again, be the, the cycle. Um, every, every two years it will turn over. And um, um, there is no limit on how many requests would be placed in this two-year cycle. That is a huge change from the previous, um, previous structure of the program. Square one, you can come back every single day and request, again here, the only limit is going to be, is going to be the quantity. You're only, it's up to the 50 licenses and up to five server titles. All right. If that really is a problem, there are some organizations which have multiple locations and may actually be able to register more than one location. Please contact us if, um, if you feel that might be your case. Such. And finally, this, uh, the, the requesting Microsoft through TechSoup is a four-step process. I'm, I'm about, we're about to walk you through all four. I'm going to do the first two, and then Jim from Microsoft will carry you through the last two. The first is you're going to request the product or products you desire at TechSoup.org. I'm going to walk you through that in a second here. You're going to receive your fulfillment email with the authorization and license numbers and a link to Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center. All right. um, and again, I'll show you that email and, and what it looks like and how to go, and then we jump to the, the um, Center Jim will take over. You're going to access the downloads and um, download the ISO image to a disk at this the service center. And using that disk and the licenses from the email, you're going to install your right and activate your product. All right. So let's go through a little bit here what's involved. All right. This, as you saw previously, is the new layout of the home page for TechSoup.org. One of the things you're going to notice here, and I've got a little arrow for you where you're going to point, each of these tabs is interactive. Very interactive. When you hover it over, you're going to get it. it's going to splash the page with a drop down, giving you all kinds of options. It can be a little bit, a little bit difficult when you first start navigating it, but it's very efficient, and the, the interface is very efficient and very easy to navigate. So, you're going to choose this right here, the product donors to, toward Microsoft, which is where we, where we keep all of our product stuff, and you're going to see. And here's now you can see this splashed across the screen here. You can see what the the drop down looks like, and you can see here all of our partners in alphabetical order listed out on the site here. And I've got Microsoft highlighted, which is alphabetically, which is called alphabetical place here, because um, that's what we're interested in. So we're going to go and we're going to click on Microsoft, and we're going to end up here at the Microsoft page. For this, if Microsoft page is a welcome page, and then a products page. All right. um, this here, I, I promise I'd show you, is where you find out about title groups. All right. You've got the uh, special tab there for, but we're actually going to focus on this one right here. All right. We're going to focus, and this is a different thing. I, I apologize. I was hoping to do a live walkthrough of this, and, and you know, more things change. The more they stay the same, technology got in the way, and I'm, I'm um, working with some screenshots. But I, I think I can show you everything you need to know here. So again, we're going to check on Browse by, browse by Products, which is going to take us to the second Microsoft page, the product catalog. All right. You're going to see some products down here when you first get here. Uh, they may not be the ones that you want. What you want to look at here is we have a two-tier drop-down menu. Um, the kind of product, and then any selection within that product. All right? And as you can see, I've got desktop applications and office suites in this situation right here. All right? So if I click on that, here's my drop-down. Right? You can see here all my different options for whatever you can get. All right? In this case, I'm looking at, like, for example, Office um, 2013, and you can see View Details. All right? Here you get to your uh, edit to the cart version here, and if you scroll down, here you have it here. All right, I've, I, there's a second product in there. Just want to let people know really quickly. Sorry to interrupt you, Gregory. That if they would like to view the screen a little bit larger, you can click full screen at the top of your page so that you can see a little bit more detail of what he's showing us right now. It's a little bit small to see, I know. So feel free to click that button so you can see better. Okay. Um, this here, I've got two products in the cart. I didn't show the second one. I apologize again. I, I, uh, 
the site was giving me was, was being temperamental this morning. So, but I'm going to show you here. So now you, you're seeing in the cart here, all right? And you've got your product, you've got your quantity, which you can change. This X here is if you want to delete this. Oh, I don't want Office after all. You can re you can remove the product right here, and you have your your price for each of your thing. This is per this is um admin fee per license. If you have three computers in the office, you're going to need three licenses. You want to put a three here, and then you can update your totals here, all right? And the total down here is going to show you the overall price of admin fee for uh, for the total of the products again. Yeah, I've got my, the, the Windows 8 upgrade edition here, and I've got the Office Professional. So let's keep going with the checkout process here. Oh, yes, I have one more thing. The restrictions check. This is a two-step process because TechSoup, being a donation program, is all about restrictions. To whom, how much, and how often. And every program has it, and as I say, Microsoft is by far the most generous. But uh, there's going to be check the restrictions check. If there's any problem with restrictions, if you uh, have too much product or anything else, it's going to let you know. So... In this case, here's the next, the next thing. I scroll down, and here we are. Now I can proceed with my donation request. I don't have any restrictions up here, so we're ready to go out and proceed with our, don't, with, our, uh, with our request. All right, this is the agreement section. Um, whenever you, if there's any kind of special, for example, if it's not returnable, or if it contains, um, if it has, Oh, any any of the number of, of you know special things involved with a uh, with a pro, uh, with a program that's going to tell you here. Um, this is simply just a uh, a non discrimination clause. All right, we would click I agree, and again you could, you can go ahead and proceed with your your donation request. All right, here's our next page here. If I scroll down, you're going to see here. Um, this is shipping information. Now, this is kind of a hardwired piece. Into, we, we do, TechSoup does offer some physical product. Microsoft is not among them. Microsoft used to send media out, media is available through the, the website, and Jim will get to that in the not-too-distant future here. Um, you're going to see this page anyway. It's because it's, it's hard-coded as part of the system. You can go ahead and move right past it. Um, we don't, it, isn't, it isn't applicable in this particular case, but we can't get rid of it. All right. On to our next thing here. Payment information. I'm going to go, go ahead and choose check payment in this case because I'm not actually placing a request and I'm not going to actually put any money in. But you'd go ahead and you'd fill the, check, the credit card information in here. All right. Obviously, you'd be choosing credit card in this case. Detail there. And you have your confirmation. So back here. That's the information just a check, and boom, your fulfillment email has arrived. Now, when this email shows up, there are several things you need to know. First of all, this is what it looks like. Uh, one thing I was not able to include, and I apologize, was the title. It says, Your Microsoft um, Volume License Agreement with the TechSoup Request Number here. All right. Um, key things you want to know are going to be, are going to be th four things you know. First of all, here's your, if, this up here, if you need any help. You need to call Microsoft or TechSoup for any assistance, or Microsoft for any assistance. These are the numbers you're going to want. Here's the TechSoup request number, so we know which, which request it comes from. And here's the authorization and license number from Microsoft that they'll need on their end to, to assist you if you have a problem. And here, here is the magic link. This is the link you're going to have. In the, signing up, that also, can also be done at the same, at the same licensing center. Um, this is the link you're going to use to go to um, the, micro, the, the Microsoft website to access the second steps three and four of this process. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Jim here to, take, or to get back to Becky, Jim, to, to lead to the rest of the process. Thank you so much, Gregory. We will be getting to Jim in just a moment. We had a couple of questions, though, from people that I'd like to raise up before we move away from your slides. So we had a question from Sakina about how do you find out what happened if you are rejected? Basically, you put in a request and you don't know why, what part of eligibility you don't meet for a product donation. Is there a way to find out what happened or to change that? <laughs> How does that work? Certainly. Um, normally speaking, there's going to be some red lettering. And again, I apologize. I don't, didn't have that information ready on hand. That's a good question. Um, 
there's going to normally be some a red lettering right there as you scroll down telling you what the problem it is. It could be, you know, you've exceeded your quantity limits for a particular program, or it could be that, um, again, quantity limits is to be the main with Microsoft. It could be that you've already requested, you, you, you have, um, the other one would be if you have requested it recently, but again, with Microsoft, it's probably going to be uh, a quantity, quantity problem. It may be eligibility. If it is eligibility, and there are a couple of program areas that Microsoft deals with directly and does not use TechSoup for their donations, an example of that because is, is education. Schools are going to want to go directly to Microsoft. They have their own very thorough education program and do not go through TechSoup. Um, but again, please check with TechSoup if you come across the eligibility. We want to take a look at it on our back end to make sure you're, in the, you're correctly labeled for eligibility um, before you go off to Microsoft or whatever else. So if you come across something that you're not eligible for Microsoft, please contact us and let us take a look at it for you. But those are the two big ones. It's going to be quantity or it's going to be eligibility. Great. Thank you, Gregory. And just to note about eligibility, we do have that eligibility checker on our website that Gregory alluded to earlier. But it is important to note that eligibility and restrictions on our donation programs are set by the donors themselves. So Microsoft or Adobe or Cisco or any of the other donor partners in our catalog, they can define, we want to donate our products to domestic violence, youth groups, animal shelters, food banks. And if you're not one of those, then maybe you're not eligible. So those those kinds of definitions are determined by the donor partners. And our system has an eligibility engine in the back end where you, when you register your organization, you select what kind of organization you are and what kind of subtype organization you are. And sometimes you may look at that list and think, we actually could be three of these different things. So if you're not sure why you don't qualify or why you're not eligible for a specific donation program, definitely give us a call because there may be, it may be that you checked something off that you may be able to change in our back system if, if you're legitimately <laughs> doing something that's equally as eligible. So definitely look into that if you're getting questions or rejections in our system for different product donation programs. We also had a couple of questions about, um, about who to contact if you want to find out if our branch of our organization quali qualifies for its own TechSoup account. So if you're a branch of libraries and you have 20 branches and you want to have your own account instead of having to go through one central location, for example, how does that work, Gregory? Good. Yeah, two ways. You can either email us at customerservice at TechSoup.org, and we'd be happy to take a look at that for you, or give us a call, and I'm not going to read the number off right here, but either go ahead and give us a call or a, uh, the uh, client services department here, or go ahead and send us an email, and we'd love to take a look and, and see. We, we want organizations that have multiple branches or libraries are, are a huge part of our, our program, and we very much want to make sure that you're able to, as our, as our mission says, you know, operate to your full potential. So if you, are, um, if you, if you have questions of any, of any of this sort, please either give us a call or send us an email, and we'd love to take a look at your individual situation. Great. Thank you so much for that. So before we move on to Jim's section, I'd like to have a couple of questions to help us gauge your experience as our audience. Have you gone through the process of fulfilling, downloading, and installing software through the VLSC, the Volume Licensing Service Center, before? Um, oh, where is that slide? Sorry, that doesn't actually have the question on it. There we go. You can go ahead and check on your screen whether you've done that process before. Now it changed names a few years ago. It used to be called the eOpen Center or something like that. eOpen <laughs> was the website through Microsoft. So maybe you've gone through eOpen. It has changed, and I think it's quite a bit easier to use as the VLSC and has more access to benefit information. And Jim is going to walk us through and show us some of how that looks in a moment. But it helps us to know if you've been in there before. So I'm going to give just another moment since we have about 25 people who have not responded and clicked on their screen. I'll give you a second to weigh in. So it looks like 20 or 63 percent sorry, of our participants say that they have not. So this is great because Jim's section will be brand new and hopefully familiarize you with what the VLSC has to offer as far as your, do your downloads and also benefits that come with your donated Microsoft software through TechSoup. 
So I'd like to go ahead and introduce Jim who is our Microsoft Volume Licensing Service Center expert for today. He manages volume licensing assets and works with the worldwide licensing and pricing programs through TechSoup. Or I'm sorry, through Microsoft. So Jim, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Becky. So first I'd like to say uh, how happy I am to be here. Uh, I'm very proud to work for Microsoft which has had a very uh, strong donation spirit to the community and to, to different organizations, and they're very good about matching gifts. And uh, for those of you that worked on the old eOpen when, when that product was moved into uh, to my product, it was, it was very uh, fulfilling to be able to help get these products out. Um, so I work on the Volume License Servicing Center. Um, what exactly is that? That's our way of delivering product uh, to customers uh, that buy in multiple groups. Um, so it's very easy to go to a store shelf and pull down a CD in the books when you buy one. If you buy 50 or 100 of those, you probably don't want 50 copies of the manual. Nobody reads those anyway. So uh, to that end, we uh, go to the volume licensing uh, Servicing Center, and uh, for some reason my clicking next is not moving the slide forward. There we go. Uh, so when you go through TechSoup and you request your donation, you'll then get a letter uh, from Microsoft that says, come to VLSC, and uh, you went, hey, I ordered software, and now I get this letter. How do I do it? This is uh, where I hope to uh, help walk you through that. Um, we designed Volume Licensing Servicing Center, or VLSC, uh, to help people access their license information in one location, view all their agreement information, their purchase information, information about their organization, easily access licenses, and, and view assigned products and, and keys and downloads. Um, essentially, it is designed for everyone from the enterprise to the donated software solution. So it, it has a broad uh, base that it covers, which means unfortunately that some of the things on there won't always uh, be connected with your open license donation. However, the majority of the site will, uh, and I'll try and walk through the pieces that, that uh, wouldn't necessarily be covered so that they won't be as confusing. Um, And next is very slow. <laughs> no problem, Jim. I can go ahead and click through for you if it's not wanting to work on your end. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's working uh, very well. There we go. So uh, as was covered earlier uh, in the getting started, uh, you'll apply with TechSoup and get uh, registered and get your product. And then you will need a current version of Internet Explorer to get onto our site. Um, those are available online easily at Microsoft.com, Internet Explorer, uh, so easy to get to. Uh, then you will need a valid business address and a Microsoft account. Now what's the difference there? So your business address is the, the address that you use for your charitable organization. So any communication there. It's important to use that address because that will tie you to support. The Microsoft account uh, is what we use for the logon. Now the Microsoft account for some of you that have had Hotmail for a long time is the, is, uh, the same as uh, what used to be called the live account or a passport account. It's uh, used with Hotmail and it's our way of authenticating you are the person that you say you are so we can tie your agreement to the individual so that you can log on. Um, the business email address needs to be the one that's listed on your open order. So whatever you placed with uh, TechSoup has to be the same. So make sure that's there. And that will walk you through the registration process. And it's a, it's a link in the email you get from Microsoft. You click on it with the business email address. It will send you a, uh, a quick note verifying the information. And this is how we prevent 
uh, pir piracy and the loss of your data. So we keep it very uh, smooth. So to clarify for our users, they will get an email from TechSoup with the fulfillment information, and they will also get an email from Microsoft with the VLSC information. And the email address used for both the requesting and for the VLSC needs to be the same. And if they have an address that is from an old user at their office or a coworker, they need to get in touch with TechSoup to help get that changed or add somebody new to their account. Thank you, Becky. So let's go into the look and feel of VLSC. Uh, there are two uh, looks to the site. Uh, the site is uh, HTTPS colon whack whack www.microsoft.com slash licensing slash servicing uh, service center. When you first log in, you will receive this non-signed in uh, site. This is what we send everybody to. It's a default uh, sign-in page. You will click on the sign-in button, which I carelessly covered up right over here. Uh, and that will log you in to your account, which will connect you to the servicing center. So we've tried to simplify the site. For those of you on the who were part of the old process, uh, it's simply got the home page, which is this page. One of the important things that I will note on here uh, on the home page, and this is a great uh, section, is this training section or learn more. Under that, uh, you say find training uh, resources, and there are a series of a half a dozen or so videos that will walk you through everything from administering the site, which would be uh, under here, and how to add new users or approve users uh, to manage the site for you, to uh, how to manage your SA subscriptions, and uh, how to download softwares and keys. So if at any time uh, after this uh, presentation you still have some questions or are still not quite clear, this is a great place to go. These videos are very short, you know, between two and four minutes long, but they give you screenshots and they'll walk you through that quick reminder uh, on how to get back onto the site. Um, at this top menu here we have the licenses. This is where you would go to see your open agreement that you have, you have uh, purchased through TechSoup and shows you all the agreements that you've listed. So if you have multiple, they'll all show you up here and show you their current status. Fortunately, with donations of our open agreements, they all come with two years of uh, what we call SA or Software Assurance. And I'll go through some of those details in a little bit later in the pro program, but that, that's also accessible right here from the home page. And then the, the big one that I'm going to go through here is Downloads and Keys. This is where you go to actually get your product. Subscriptions is not so much uh, part of your program, but unfortunately because I have to cover every program under the sun, the subscriptions ends up being there, and then the administration piece. And then there's, a, of course, a help piece if you have any specific questions. There's a pretty good FAQ as well, and uh, the training videos. So we've, uh, I've, I've jumped ahead of myself in the, the uh, look and feel, but uh, here are, again, the uh, menu bars and everything that you uh, see. Again, I can't recommend more. One thing I didn't mention on these training videos, uh, they are also, uh, they have uh, been translated into multiple languages. So if you, uh, if you watch the video, you can also see the text of the video in up to 12 different languages. So we tried to make it very accessible uh, for all different uh, languages and cultures. Let's skip right over to the downloads and keys because this is where you go to get your product. So you've you purchased a product. Uh, you now log onto the site. You click on Downloads and Keys. Uh, now I have opened up an agreement that shows every product under the sun. Uh, you will have purchased something specific like, say, Office. Well, under Office, that authorizes you to all of the components of Office, which would be Word, Excel. And so you would 
only show, uh, we have some 147 different products from Microsoft available, but uh, you'll only see the ones under your agreement under Open, which is great. It will filter those products down for you. From this page you can find out more details about each product, so you get a description of it. You get a download option for it and the product keys. So. The product keys are the uh, five by five set of numbers, so it's five sets of five numbers that will allow you to activate that product once you've downloaded it so that you can run it in your environment. The VLSC website has older versions of software. Uh, the standard products are one version back from the previous release of the product, so that gives us in current Office situation, we've got Office 2013 that just released. Office 2010 will be on the site, and Office 2007 will also be on the site. Office 2003 is temporarily on the site, but will be going away shortly because as products uh, get older in nature, they, they get prone to have more open windows for attack, we, we tend to try and roll off the older products. As, as we go along, that keeps you safe from viruses and bugs, as well as uh, the longer a product is out there, the more vulnerabilities uh, the, the, the bad guys tend to find in them. So we tend to upgrade, give you new features, functionalities, but we also upgrade the protections on the product that protect your, uh, your, your environments. So we definitely recommend that you move up as soon as you can to the newest version. We do realize that uh, when you do some customizations and things like that, that you will uh, eventually probably need to stay on an older version while you get your users trained and moved up. So that's why we supply the older versions of the products. So I'll go through and I'll click on uh, a description of the product to show you what this looks like. This is uh, Excel 2010. It shows you the version. It gives you a brief understanding of uh, what's included in this download so that you uh, know what you're selecting. Um, with a, a two-year SA benefit, software assurance benefit, you actually have uh, the rights to upgrade for the next two years to the current version of the product as well as if uh, you need to run the previous version of the product, you can downgrade to say 2010 from 2013. So this will describe the product. Next we move to the download, and if you click on download, and it gives you some brief uh, explanations on, on download uh, the purchase, uh, we do, we have moved away from providing media and moved towards this download option only, uh, simply because it makes it easier for us to uh, provide more donated software and, and, and uh, we, we reduce that expense of the media. We, we make uh, one place that everybody downloads and it makes it a lot easier to share for us. So the download option, you'll notice that there's a download method. Uh, it has the download manager, and the other option is download directly from the website. The difference between the two, the web downloads and the download manager, is something called an ActiveX control. We recommend download manager uh, with the ActiveX control because that allows you to, if you have a problem with your connection and it breaks off midway through the download, to pick up your download right where it left off uh, instead of having to start over, which you do on the web download. We do realize that some lockdown environments require uh, no ActiveX, so that's why we offer the other option. We also offer uh, select languages. Uh, many of our products come in uh, up to 27 different languages. Um, and then we offer an operating system between 32 and, and 64 bit. Many of the operating systems are moving to 64 bit because it allows you to uh, use more memory and, and allows your computer to be more powerful. Uh, but if you're working on some older hardware or uh, an older system, then the 32 bit may be a better option for you. So we give both of those options in the download section. 
Now the download uh, comes down as an, uh, what we call in the industry an ISO uh, or ISO file format. Now we created them in a standard ISO format or ISO format uh, because it makes it easily transportable. You download it. Uh, there's uh, plenty of software out there to take an ISO format and throw it on directly onto a CD or a DVD. And that allows you to then plug that into multiple computers, whether they're connected or not, to do your installs for uh, all of your licenses. The ISO format can be confusing to some, but TechSoup has an excellent uh, documentation on how to use the format, where to get uh, tools to open up the format, how you'd install it on their website. So further on in the, in the uh, presentation, we'll have that link to uh, how to get that information so that you can use that going forward. The last piece is the product keys. Um, so these allow you to uh, activate the product uh, for all of your open. Um, you will have something called a KMS key, uh, and this allows you to uh, enter the uh, product information and activate that product. So this would be uh, the same key that when you, if you bought a retail version of the product, comes on the uh, inside cover that allows you to activate a product. And this is how we know that one version of the product is being used. So this is uh, the same for all of your installs. So you, one key will activate all of the downloads that you uh, have installed across your uh, products. Um, you can, if you choose to, export all of your keys uh, into an Excel spreadsheet at one time. So everything that's covered under your agreement will be in your spreadsheet. I do ha highly recommend that you encrypt that spreadsheet because that is the keys to your software. So uh, keep that under tight control from your environment. Uh, do not email your keys, please. Uh, once, once you've emailed keys around, they tend to get lost or uh, distributed elsewhere. So, and these are only for the products that you've downloaded. So they're very product specific. So some products will show up without keys required. Um, those are what we call uh, pre-authorized uh, products that have uh, the installs pre-installed. Uh, so if there is nothing that shows up in this key section, don't worry. Just go ahead and install the product, and it will go ahead and, and uh, install through there. Um, and this would be an example of no keys assigned. So this product key uh, for Office Standard 2010, uh, there's a link in this uh, tool to, to get the number there, or retail products don't require the keys. Um, and, and so there are three types of examples that, that would not require keys. So if you see those, you should get a pretty good definition, say, for uh, no product key required or what you have to do to get uh, additional activation keys from this location. And it will show you and walk you through that. The other uh, section I'd like to cover in addition to downloads is software assurance benefits. One of the nice things about our donations uh, is they come with two years of software assurance. Uh, software assurance gives you several uh, benefits, uh, including uh, allowing you to plan through new product versions. Um, it gives you access uh, for deployment services through software upgrades, some e-learnings for users. Uh, there is something called the Home Use Program, which is great uh, for Office. So what the Home Use Program is, is it allows you to, if you've got a, a copy uh, and license for your uh, users in your organization, they can use this home use program to also get a copy for home. And that use is available to them for as long as your SA agreement lasts, so up to two years from your agreement, and as long as that person works 
uh, for your charitable organization. So that's a great benefit as part of SA. Um, you've got something called license mobility. Uh, this is a little confusing. Uh, but what it means is that if you, say, partnered with another company to run your technology, your servers, or things like that, and they were going to uh, put your software on their servers, this license mobility in SA allows you to have them install and run the software for you. Um, Several other key things, uh, the cold backup and disaster recovery is an excellent uh, benefit that allows you to get a clean place to go get your software back in case the worst happens. And then we have a product called TechNet, which is an excellent technical uh, product that allows you to uh, get really detailed questions um, on different products on how to do things in a, in a uh, multi-user environment. So if you have confusions on you want to automate an Excel spreadsheet, TechNet would be the place to go to get those questions and answers. So those are all a great program. So if we go to the Software Assurance tab, this is what you'll see. Now, because this is designed for all programs, not all of these benefits are available uh, to the donated software. However, I've included a list, and there's included on uh, the TechSoup website a list of your software assurance benefits that are granted with the donated software. Um, this uh, list here is what you'll have. So what you would do, and let's say we wanted to do the home use program. Uh, for office because I had some workers, uh, but they're, they're volunteers in my organization. We have a license when they're in the office, but when they're working at home, knowing that sometimes work does follow you there, they'd like to use the same copy of office. And they can use the home use program. So you would click on the home use program. It will walk you over to uh, select your agreement that it's authorized for. So I've blanked out the, the actual agreements here because they are actual agreements that I stole the, the screenshots for. But uh, you select agreement that you want to apply your home use to. In this case, it would be the one that covered Office. And then it will take you over to your benefits summary page. This summary page will actually tell you all the benefits that you're eligible for and how many of them you've used. So if you have 25 copies of Office, you would have 25 home use authorizations. And you can assign those out however you may uh, using this. And it shows you what's active, what the history is, the terms and conditions behind it, and a description of the home use program. So if I click on that home use program, then I would go in and it would say, well, for what organization do you want to authorize this for? And it then generates uh, the domain that you're authorizing against, and you can send out to your users exactly how they would set up. And they would log on to our home use site. They'd enter in their email address with your domain attached to it, and that would tell us that they are authorized to use it. So it's a great benefit that we try and uh, authorize through uh, this program. Uh, you get it for two years, and it's one of the added on features that, that just comes with the package that you really should take advantage of. Uh, after two years, there are are ways to renew software assurance. Uh, you, you can uh, renew it through the standard methods of uh, software assurance, which is about one-third of the market value uh, uh, of the product uh, to continue on for an additional two years of software assurance. Or you can go back to TechSoup and order another product. It's a two-year program, so the cycle works well with TechSoup. Uh, but our software, there may be reasons why going through software assurance is a better solution for your uh, organization. So we have both the option to go through TechSoup to buy a new product or a renewal of your SA agreement. Um, 
So definitely it would be worth contacting uh, your uh, open value reseller for charitable resellers to see which is the best option for you. The important thing to remember though is you need to renew before the expiration of the agreement because there is unfortunately no grace period. So if you choose to renew, that's something you need to do right away. Uh, now, for additional resources, again, uh, I wanted to point out that we've got some great training videos on VLSC, and TechSoup has uh, some other excellent videos on software assurance, uh, as well as uh, definitely excellent descriptions on using VLSC and how to get your software. So at that point, I think uh, I'll turn it back over to Becky. Thank you so much, Jim. That was really informative. And we actually had somebody saying that they're downloading their Office 2013 right now with the help of this event. So we're glad that Excellent. this has been helpful. Um, just to clarify a couple of things really quickly around software assurance, it is chock full of really excellent benefits that comes for no additional cost with your donated Microsoft software with the exception of server products. So any other products, Office Suites, Visio, Project, any of those products, um, and including operating systems, come with Software Assurance through our donation program with Microsoft. Server-based products do not. So just keep that in mind. And you know, in talking about how to renew Software Assurance, that's largely mostly relevant to organizations that have a lot of licenses. Um, so maybe if you're only using 5 or 6 or 10 or 15, of your Microsoft licenses. That may not be something you would need to do, but we wanted to make sure that that information was available for you. The home use program, the learning resources, e-learnings available, TechNet, access to all of these great things are available at no additional cost to you through Software Assurance, and you can access those in the VLSC um, where Jim showed it to you. We also ran a webinar on this topic that highlighted some of those in more detail. So if you're interested in that, we can include a link to that in the follow-up email that you'll receive later, later this afternoon. We have a whole bunch of questions that have come in, so I would like to go ahead and get some of those answered. So we had a question about from Barbara, and this is for Jim, um, asking, what happens if you're using a Mac? Do you need to be running Internet Explorer to access the VLSC? or can you use a different browser? So you can use different browsers, and we have tested several. However, they don't always work exactly like we intended. So uh, most of the time you can do almost everything on Internet Explorer. The one problem on the Mac that we do run into occasionally is the ISO format. Uh, Macintosh does have different uh, products for opening those up, but those uh, are available. There's also several forums out there that, that will help you walk through those. Um, those products are, are uh, fairly easy to get and install. Microsoft is actually the, uh, the world's leader in selling Macintosh uh, software, believe it or not. Uh, and we're very, uh, very happy with that platform. And Office is, is by far one of the best suites available out there. So uh, definitely, it's a good use. But uh, there are occasionally um, the gotchas. The one thing you will have to do if you're downloading, however, is you won't be able to use the Download Manager. You'll have to download via the web. Great, thank you. So we had a question that was a follow-up about software assurance that came in, and I actually will will try and field this, but I'd invite either of you, um, Gregory or Jim, to respond as well. Um, Carol asks, so based on what you just said about software assurance, we order, say, three Office products. We would have three home use programs. Is that correct? Instead of buying individual products, can we just get multiple licenses for a lower fee? Um, technically, you're supposed to have a license for every machine you're running, and you're supposed to be running it at your home computer using the same license, same employee, same, same information. And if you no longer work for the organization, you're supposed to uninstall it. That license 
is the same license essentially that you would be using on your office machine. So having three licenses that you requested for a, a donation program doesn't give you really free access to three other licenses to install elsewhere. Home use is really to make it easier for staff of organizations to access the same product on a home machine. Um, but it does belong to the organization and it is the same license number. Is that, do you guys concur with my response to that, Gregory and Jim? That's correct. It is a one for one. So it's one person who has a uh, use in, in office can also use it at home. They're, they're not actually considered separate licenses. It's just the ability to make it portable. Right, so it just extends that license. And the home use program I believe costs $10 to extend to your home computer. So keep that in mind. Um, but it's not entirely free, but it is less expensive than having to request another donated license of most products. Um, we also have a question from, from Elise. If we get rid of a computer, can you transfer your product key to a new PC? This came in actually from a few different people. What happens if you retire a computer or uninstall the program, can you use it on a different machine? You absolutely can. Uh, one thing I will remind everybody is that when you do uh, end of life a computer, be sure uh, to wipe that computer completely clean because not only do you uh, send off licenses of our product, which is, uh, is an issue but not really that important, what you could potentially do is send off information about the people that provide help to your organization, and you never want to do that. So if you completely wipe those machines before decommissioning them, then you preserve the, the sanctity of your donors and your, your people that are helping with your organization. So make sure you definitely purge those systems, but then you, you have use of that license. It is portable between machines. And it's even portable if someone leaves your organization, you can use that license for the new person that comes in and fills that position. Great. Thank you for clarifying that. We have a question from Jeremy that asks, if we buy Office 2013, can we activate an Office 2010 license through VLSC? If somebody yes. needs it for backwards compatibility or... Yes. So uh, part of the SA benefit is downwards, uh, downgrade rights, which means that you can buy a 2013 and you can install 2010 instead. So that is totally acceptable and that is the recommended way to do it. If you choose to buy Windows 8 and then install Windows 7, uh, that is also available to you. So those options are definitely available. Great. And that, like I said, for backwards compatibility might be something you'd need to do if you have a, a legacy critical piece of software that doesn't work with the newer software that you've just received. You may want to downgrade. Um, so Michael asked, I want to put in an order before leaving for a two-week vacation. Can one wait before continuing with any other actions once the fulfillment email has been sent? And there are two different fulfillment emails, the one from TechSoup and the one from VLSC. So I guess it would help to clarify on both ends, if, if he requests through TechSoup and doesn't go any further and gets a fulfillment email, can that email just sit there while he's on vacation? Or is there a timeline by when he needs to take action? So a uh, bit of a complicated question, but there's no actual timeline that you have to do it. However, uh, remember that your license starts the moment you sign the contract. So your two years will begin then. Uh, as soon as you've signed and purchased the product. So uh, there's nothing forcing you to uh, please don't stay off your vacation. Take your vacation and, and install it after the fact. Um, but uh, your two-year agreement does start at time of purchase. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we don't want anybody for going vacation just to install software. That's no fun. Um, Carol asks, do downloads have to be on a CD or DVD, or can it be sent to a flash drive? And we actually we do address this in the article that Jim mentioned on ISO files that one, we recommend that you put it on a DVD or a large flash drive, not a CD because it may not fit. Um, but yeah, CDs don't hold a whole lot of data. So DVD, but it also can be to a flash drive. So I went ahead and took care of that one. Let's see what else we have here. We have John asking, a product we downloaded showed 
two different key types. What's the difference and which one do you use? Which we actually have quite a few questions coming in about how do you know if you're picking the right version because they see multiple products listed even though they may have only requested one. They don't know to get the 64-bit right. or multi-language packs. Is there anything to help people know which thing to download? So uh, let's start with the 64-bit versus 32-bit. That is really, really uh, dependent on your computers themselves. Uh, some of the older computers only run 32-bit software. Uh, the new computers can run 64 or 32-bit. So uh, if your computer operating system is 32-bit, you are required to download it, it, the 32-bit version to run it. 64-bit gives you some access to extended memory so you can get to larger size files and things work a little bit faster. So if you have a 64-bit, I really recommend the 64-bit versions of our products. Um, but either way, uh, you should be fine in the 64-bit environment. As far as the different versions, I did see one question about the, the K and the N. Um, as many of you have heard, uh, we have had our, our, our run-ins and discussions with uh, different government agencies in the U.S. and the European Union. Some of those require us to do special builds for uh, those country regions, uh, specifically in Europe. So the K and the N are designed uh, specifically for European and Asian markets. So uh, if you're looking for any product that has uh, those different versions on it, then here in the States or anywhere in North America or South America, for example, you just need the standard version. You don't need any with the special designators. As far as key types, um, there are several types of keys. And actually, there's a, there's a help file in one of my slides. Uh, let's see if I can find it very quickly. Um, So uh, for product key types, we have several types, and it describes what each key type is uh, versus a KMS or MAC key, which are the two types that, that you would use. The MAC key is primarily for large environments. We're talking several hundred systems. So in most cases, you're going to be with the KMS unless you've got a very large organization. So uh, the if you aren't sure which one you're going to use. Uh, in the key section, and actually in all of the sections of uh, VLSC, there is this little question mark um, at the top of each header. Those question marks uh, give you some key uh, information uh, for some of those things. And this describes the KMS key versus a MAC key and when, when you would use it. The most important thing to know is if you have a MAC key, you need to have a server that can activate it local. Um, so that's why it's for large enterprise environments and not necessarily for the open environment that you'd be working in. Great. Thanks so much for that, Jim. And we know there's a lot of questions about different software types. And so we have an article from TechSoup on 32 versus 64-bit as well. We'll make sure to include some of those resources in the follow-up email that we send out. And we have a couple of those resources highlighted here about the ISO files. You will get the email with this PowerPoint so you can click on these links. We won't post them in the chat since they aren't clickable. But we will send that out later this afternoon. I'd like to go ahead and thank our, our presenters today. Thank you, Gregory, and thank you, Jim, for all of your great information on how to walk through this process. We hope that this has been helpful for you. You will be able to view this full recording at your convenience if you want to see anything more clearly and pause it and walk through the process on your own when you're actually requesting your donations or getting them fulfilled through the VLSC. So thank you both of you, and thank you to ReadyTalk who helps us promote and, and sponsor these webinars each week. You will be prompted when this webinar closes with a post-event survey. So please take a moment to tell us what you thought and help us improve our webinar program. Five equals excellent, one equals poor. So 
Please give us your honest feedback so we can make them better for the future, and join us again at TechSoup in the future. Thanks so much everyone. Have a terrific day.